Hello and welcome to Sharing the Light. I'm Reverend Robert Griffin. Sharing the Light is an online ministry opportunity of the Sunshine Cathedral located in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today I'm joined by Reverend Darrell Watkins, who is the senior pastor of the Sunshine Cathedral here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and also Reverend B.K. Hipshire, who is our new virtual church chaplain. Welcome to you both today. Our topic for today in this particular segment, we're going to be asking the question, why health and religion must confront racism? So, Reverend Watkins, how do we begin this discussion today on this topic? Well, the question is, is the question, isn't it? I mean, why is it as religious people we ought to be confronting racism? Uh, well, how is that a religious value? Some people will say, well, that's your political agenda, or that's a sociological issue, or who cares, or haven't we, are we past all of that? And uh, the truth is that a lot of us have come from traditions and from areas in the country where religion was actually used to promote uh, racism, uh, segregation, uh, so, some pretty unfortunate attitudes. And so I think religion has to, um, one, sort of make amends, sort of atone for uh, an unfortunate past of either ignoring or promoting uh, racism. And then secondly, if we are called to be light in the world, how is it that, uh, that we could not uh, address issues of of oppression or, or unfairness or, or, or disparity or whatever. So I think that's the, uh, I, I think that's the thing that launches us into the discussion in the first place. BK, how would you respond to this, this, this topic today? Well, I agree with Darrell, but I also think that it's vitally important that we consider the structures of power that support things like racism and uh, really begin to deconstruct how we as people of faith are called to look at the oppression that's created, but also to look at how we live in privilege and how that plays into how we relate to racism as people of faith. You know, we, we talk a lot about racism in a lot of different circles, but we also know that racism goes beyond just the black and white spectrum of what mm -hmm. people may be accustomed to racism. So what does it mean for us in the larger context of our queer community where we have faced so many forms of discrimination? What is, what is the racism in our community today? Well, it's sort of interesting that uh, what people think of, what cognitively sort of pops up for people when they hear uh, the word racism, people, I think, sometimes think, I don't have any overt ill intention toward anyone, so how could I be racist? Or I don't use any insulting words for any group of people, so how could I be racist? And that's really about as far as the analysis goes for a lot of people, whether they're gay or straight or, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I think part of it is sensitizing people uh, to the fact that these issues are more than uh, what is polite uh, speech, mm -hmm. <laughs> or or what is uh, or, or what you feel is a good intention, or you know, just because you don't feel mean toward anyone, mm -hmm. that like uh, BK was saying, there's a lot of systemic things that privileges one group over another, uh, or one group over all others, and if we're not willing to acknowledge how we are advantaged or disadvantaged or participate in a system that doesn't treat everyone fairly then we're actually uh, contributing to ongoing uh, difficulties. Mm. And so part of the thing is to educate ourselves about how racism is more than my personal uh, speech patterns or how I individually feel about, about anybody. A lot of times we feel good or not good. We have these feelings about this faceless, nameless other out there. Mm. And so it's very easy to say, well, I have no ill will towards you know, people that I don't relate to. Well, why don't I relate to them? Why don't I live on the block with these people? Why don't I work with these people or, or worship with these people or, or, or vacation with these people, whoever these people are? Mm -hmm. If all of the people I'm spending my life with or 90% of the people I spend my life with look like me, there's probably, I'm probably a part of the systemic racism in my society mm -hmm. uh, that I may not even be aware of. Mm -hmm. yeah. BK, what about you from a, from a lesbian woman and perspective. Oh. Well, as just from a person perspective, okay. I think that um, for me, I had to confront racism again all over mm. after 9-11. Mm. Uh, I was raised in the southern U.S. I dealt with black-white racism. I did my best to confront those issues in my life and although I will never say that I am beyond being racist because mm. that's how I was raised, um, I think after 9-11 I really had to look at myself and understand that I was living in a culture that was highly, highly, highly oppressing people because they were Arab, people because they were Muslim, they were of a different faith, they looked different than us, uh, or most of us. And uh, when they got on airplanes, they were suspect. When they move about the world, we had a, a situation just recently where a Muslim family was removed 
from an airplane right. simply because they were discussing something that it had they been white, had they been uh, the dominant culture, color, mm -hmm. uh, and race, uh, probably would never have happened. So, do you this remember is, the, in New York City the cab drivers who were Sikh that yes. people assumed were Muslim yes. and they they suffered physical violence? Yes, because because of people's uh, fear and, and even ignorance about uh, what the other uh, is or yes. whatever. So, if we were to kind of wrap this one uh, topic up today, what would be something that you would say? that we need to be aware of as we begin to unpack the levels of racism? What is the one thing that maybe BK you would name as the one thing for you that people would address in unpacking uh, racism? I think for me I have to acknowledge that my own personal experience is in some way a reflection of institutional and cultural uh, embedded racism and power structures. Mm -hmm. I think that for me that's what's mm -hmm. most important. Uh, I think there are two things that I want to highlight. First of all, everyone at this table, uh, we sort of sound alike. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you noticed. Uh, uh, Robert is from Alabama. You're from Tennessee, uh, North South Carolina, Carolina, South Carolina, Carolina. and uh, I'm from Arkansas. And so we we come from a part of the world where uh, this is a lived experience. Mm -hmm. On one side of the experience or the other, yes. uh, Indeed. you know. Right. So so there's a so, so there's there's just that sort of name I think that. Uh, uh, it, we have to deal with this because we uh, grew up in a way, and I'm, I'm not sure anyone in the U.S. hasn't, uh, but uh, we're sort of uh, labeled, I think, in the South because of, because of some unfortunate history. So, so there's that one thing. The other thing that I want to, to note about uh, racism in the JLBT community, mm -hmm. communities, as if we were, as if we were uh, <laughs> unified in any way, but uh, in, our, in our communities, is that racism isn't, isn't just about that we may benefit, like even though I'm a gay man, uh, an HIV positive. Well, those are some strikes against me in some ways in our culture. But I am a gay man. <laughs> and I am a white gay man. And so I can't just focus on my disadvantages. I also have to focus on the advantages that society gives me. Uh, maybe not as many advantages as a straight white man, mm -hmm. but certainly more than others. And so that so I have to I have to be aware of my privilege, or I'll never use it responsibly. I'll never try to share it. I'll never work for for equality. So I have to know not just my disadvantage, but my advantages. And the other thing is because our our community uh, deals with sexuality and are labeled by our sexuality, I think we have to be very careful about how in our community racism is expressed by how people are eroticized mm -hmm. by their race. Right, exactly. that, uh, that, that people will identify themselves as I prefer this kind of person or that kind of person. How people are objectified by their race. And uh, so those are certainly things that I think are challenges in our community. And as religious people, we'll want to uh, at least have the discussion. We may never find the answers, but we'll, ne we'll never even get close to the answers if we aren't don't summon the courage to name the issues. Right. Well, just to kind of wrap this up again, how would you uh, characterize the need for church to say, we? this is still an ongoing issue? I mean, we're, we, uh, we'll assume we remember Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, we, we're getting ready to inaugurate our first African-American president. And with all those things that are very heavily packed, what would you say is the most prominent thing that churches need to do today to continue to address this issue? Um, Actually, I think that uh, we have inaugurated our president, uh, and uh, we have celebrated uh, Martin Luther King uh, back in January. But also um, that we have to uh, remember that Jesus we, is the is the figure that says, "Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden," and we can't be the body of Christ if we aren't addressing the things that keep that all from getting the refreshment and the inclusion and the empowerment they need. Great. Well, thank you both for being with us today. Uh, Reverend DeRay Watkins, Senior Pastor of Sunshine Cathedral, Reverend B.K. Hipsher, our new virtual church chaplain, and we want to thank you for being with us as well. I want to thank you for joining us. If you have any questions about us, please visit us on our website at www.sunshinecathedral.org or write to me at robert at sunshinecathedral.org. If you're in the Fort Lauderdale area, we'd love for you to worship with us on Sundays at 9 a.m., 10.30 a.m., or 6 p.m. And of course, you can watch our sermons online at the website. You can also make prayer requests or donations online. We wish you blessings for your spiritual journeys. Thank you for joining us here today at Sharing Delight.